Welcome back, my amazing learners. We're on the final part of the story of Brother and Nancy and the birds at Cherry Island. Now, Brother and Nancy was very eager to leave, but he tried to contain his anxiety. They pushed the boat from the beach into the water. They entered the boat. The two rode while Anansi sat in the back seat. Mr. and Mrs. Alligator waved Anansi goodbye with bright smiles as they set out to sea. Anansi was terrified each time the alligators smiled at him, but remained calm. Those teeth were not made for friendly smiles, murmured Anansi. They very much remind me of Mas Liebert back home. Wife, said Mr. Alligator, I have an urge to go and look at the eggs. I don't trust sweet mouth people. He entered the room in which the eggs were placed. He uttered a dismal cry. Ah! What is wrong? What is wrong? cried Mrs. Alligator. And Nancy named of nearly all of the eggs, he cried. He ran to the beach and saw the boat just about to dip beyond the horizon. Brother Crab, Brother Shrimp, bring back Anansi, wailed Alligator. What is he saying? asked Brother Crab. Brother Shrimp was trying to tell Brother Crab, but his voice was so high-pitched, Brother Crab could not understand what he was saying. Brother Crab, he says you are to row fast. A storm is coming, bellowed Anansi into Crab's ears. No, 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 squeaked Brother Shrimp. See how you are little, whingy and meager? Row the boat. If you don't obey me, I will toss you straight into Brother Shark's mouth in the sea, threatened Anansi. I will obey you. But I will know where you disembark and take Brother Alligator to hunt you down, promised Brother Shrimp. Persons who like to threaten others always end up in hot waters, warned Anansi. They rode fast and brought Anansi to the shores of his island. Thank you, but we are all so cold only a warm bath could make us warm. Let us go into that beach hut over there. There is always a large pot and firewood, recommended Anansi. They agreed that they were cold and a warm bath would energize them. Anansi lit the fire and placed a pot of water in it. After a few minutes, Anansi declared, The water is warm. Now I will jump in first, and as soon as I come out, both of you jump in together. And Nancy jumped in and remained for a few seconds. Oh, the water is so warm and nice. Take your turn now, and I will jump in again, remarked Anansi. As soon as they jumped in, Anansi slammed the cover on the pot and placed a stone on it. The fire would burst into a blaze and the pot started bubbling. Brother Crab and Brother Shrimp were cooked. Everyone on the beach ran towards the hut. What smells so delicious here? They all asked. Shrimp and Crab, answered Anansi as he made a meal of them. Now that we know shrimp and crab can be cooked and eaten, we will hunt them down and prepare our own, they promised. From that time on, people have been cooking crabs and shrimps in pots of hot water. Until this day, Brother Alligator is still lying at the river mouth waiting for his boat to return. Later that day, Brother Parrot saw Anansi. I did not know that you were back. Parrot began to curse and swear, demanding his corn from Anansi. What a fellow can curse and swear. Take it easy. I have already arranged for you to get your corn. 
Parson John Crow will supply the corn. Meet me at the back of his house at three o'clock, instructed Anansi. I don't know where Parson John Crow lives, declared Parrot. And Nancy carefully gave him the direction. He said he could easily find the place. I know that you're a noisy fellow. You must come quietly as Brother Slingshot comes over there quite regularly. Yes, agreed Brother Parrot. And Nancy arrived and sat at the back gate of the house. As he waited, Brother Parrot arrived punctually at three o'clock. I am glad that you are on time. Sit on the step and relax for a minute. And Nancy suddenly jumped to his feet, frantically bellowing, Brother Parrot, Brother Parrot, Brother Slingshot come, jump in the cage. Without thinking, Brother Parrot jumped into the cage. And Nancy quickly locked the door. Brother Parrot opened his mouth to ask Anansi a question. Don't say a word for the rest of the day or you may lose your beak, cautioned Anansi. Anansi whistled three times. Parcel Drunker came through his back door very excited. I am late for an appointment, Parson, but here is your parrot. Give him as much corn as he needs for the rest of his life. Sure, sure. Sure, sure, replied Parson Drunkrow with a bright smile. And Nancy handed him the cage and hurried away. Brother Parrot realized that he was again in captivity. There was no way for him to escape. Parson Drunkrow wasted no time. He wanted to hear him preach. On his way home, each time he arrived at a curve on the road, the parrot cried out, Corner, parson, corner, followed by a mild expletive, but the parson ignored him. Sunday morning came. Parson John Crow was so excited that the moment was close. He arrived at church early. Gradually, the congregation increased. Parson John Crow informed the church that the parrot that he had was an excellent preacher. He spoke in glowing terms of the bird's ability. The congregation became quite excited and sat in, in quiet anticipation. I am going to give you a demonstration, said Parson gleefully. He used a little rod and prodded, prodded brother parrot. What the hell are you doing? Don't ramp with me, declared the miserable, unhappy parrot. Parson Drunkrow prodded him again. Joke is joke and sport is sport, I say. Do not ramp with me. Bald man, jump me with that stick again and see what happens, raged parrot. Parson Drunkrow prodded him again. He blurted out a volley of expletives. The whole church was in turmoil. The people demanded an explanation. He walked out of the church. The congregation almost mobbed him. He was so embarrassed that all his feathers turned white. It was good that he could fly. He took to the skies and soared over the trees away from the embarrassment and the threats of his assailants. Today, he is still known as Parson John Crow, but he is never seen in a church again. The end. Well, the story is over. The fun doesn't stop there and the learning never ends. So let's learn a few Jamaican words. People call it Patois, Jamaican Creole, but we just speak like this sometimes depending on the Jamaican. So, bad word. What is a bad word? That's a foul expression or expletive. Con artist. Who is a con artist? That's a career swindler. Somebody who makes it their job 
to trick people to get favors out of them, money and things out of them. Now, if you think back to the story, who was the con artist in the story? Were they a successful con artist? <laughs> Let's look, look at another common Jamaican word, ginal. G-I-N-N-A-L, ginal. It means a clever deceiver or trickster. And Nancy the spider is a part of our African or West African heritage to be more specific. And in Jamaica, when somebody calls you a ginal, that is not a good thing. Here's another word, howdy. This is the shortened form of how do you do? And then we have the word joke. The word joke means to poke with a pointed object. Don't joke me, don't joke me. All right, some of my students are like that. When they want each other's attention, you have some of them that they will take their finger and poke the other one. And then the poked child will say, don't joke me, don't trouble me, leave me alone. <laughs> all right, then here's another one that we use all the time, nyam, N-Y-A-M, nyam. It means to eat greedily, gluttonous eating. Then we have a few other words there. Parson Jonkro, who is a, which is a albino strain of the turkey buzzard. Then we have romp, romp with a O R O M P, which means rough play or frolic. Those of you who are fans of dancehall music, I think the most recent song would be the Romping Shop by a very popular artist. You can go and look that up on YouTube if you want to. Then we have single Bible. This is just a colloquial term, a common Jamaican term for the aloe vera plant. Then sweet mouth. A sweet mouth person is a person who is an enchanting and daring speaker. Can you think of somebody with a sweet, with a sweet mouth? They know how to charm you out of your money or to get favors out of you. Nothing as sweet like them when they want something from you. Okay, then we have white rum. We have quite a few different popular brands of white rum here in Jamaica. Most of you probably have heard of Appleton Estates, and there are so many others. And then we have the last word here, yard. A yard is just a common term for a home in Jamaica, both the house and the surrounding yard space as a matter of fact some people even call jamaicans yardy it's not as it's not as popular a term as before but i hope that you learned a few jamaican words today and you enjoyed the story of anansi and the birds at cherry island thank you so much for watching see you in the next video